good evening, everyone. This is the official start of the back room. We had our little get to know you session and now we're ready to dive in. I'm so happy that so many of you could come tonight and um, meet these authors, these wonderful authors. Someone said beforehand that they didn't know any of these authors. You're going to know them very well by the end of the evening because that's the beauty of the back room, the way we get to interact with these wonderful authors in person. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm Karen Dion. I write wilderness thr thrillers, uh, psychological suspense set in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Um, my two uh, novels in that vein are The Marsh King's Daughter and The Wicked Sister. And the books have been published in dozens of countries. The Marsh King's Daughter is soon to be a major motion picture starring Daisy Ridley. Thank you. <laughs> We're still waiting on a release date. I've been saying soon to be for a long time, but the movie is finished. So, you know, we're, we're this close right now to where everyone will be able to see it. And my co-host tonight is the fabulous Hank Philippi Ryan. I'm sure everybody knows Hank because she is so well known in the mystery and thriller world. Now it's my great pleasure to introduce the authors that you all came to hear tonight, right? So we've got Reese Bowen. She's the New York Times bestselling author of two historical mystery series, as well as several internationally bestselling standalone historical novels. Reese has won over 20 awards to date, including five Agathas. Her work is translated into 30 languages. Her newest is Peril in Paris. That's what you were holding up, right? <laughs> Which uh, just came out November 8th. And believe it or not, this is Reese's 50th book. So I'm just in mm -hmm. awe of your career and your um, wonderful writing ability. Reese was born and raised in England, and she worked in BBC drama before becoming a professional writer. And then we have Valerie Burns. Hi, Valerie. Valerie is an Agatha, Anthony, Edgar, and Next Generation Award finalist. She's the author of several series, because that's the theme for tonight's program, right? Series. She's the author of The Mystery Bookshop, Bookshop Dog Club, R.J. Franklin, and Baker Street Mystery Series. In addition to writing, she works as a manager at a call center, which sounds very interesting and like something you might want to talk about in the breakout rooms, too. And she's also a mentor in the Writing Popular Fiction MFA program at Seton Hill University in Pennsylvania. Uh, her newest book, Two Parts Sugar, One Part Murder, is a Crime Reads Most Anticipated Book of 2022. So that's a that's a fabulous thing. Congrats on that. Now we have Simon. I've always said Gervais. Is that am I saying it correctly, Simon? It's perfect, Karen. Okay. Simon Gervais is Simon perfect. Gervais. He has a very interesting background. He's a former, former federal agent who specialized in protective operations and counterterrorism for the RCMP, RMP? Royal Canadian Mounted Police, correct. Thank you. Yes, I should just say it out and never mind the initials, right? He spent nearly 20 years in the military and in law enforcement, and his assignments took him all over Europe and the Middle East. He writes four exciting thriller series. He was writing currently for Robert Ludlum's Black Briar series, the Clayton White series, the Pierce Hunt series, and the Mike Walton series. I like in his short bio, he, he said he's now writing full time. I would think so <laughs> if you're doing all of that. <laughs> uh, Simon lives with his wife and two teenagers in Ottawa, Canada, and he's an avid skier, boater, and diver. And we have Glenn Eric Hamilton. Hi, Glenn. Hello. Glenn was raised aboard a sailboat, which I I definitely have questions about that. And he grew up around the marinas and islands of the Pacific Northwest. His series featuring reformed thief Van Shaw has won the Anthony McCavity and Strand Magazine Critics Awards and been nominated for the Edgar, Barry, and Nero Awards. And so those of you who are familiar with the thriller world and the mystery world know that's a that's a quite a collection of nominations and awards. Glenn and his family live in the, his hometown of Seattle and it's beautiful overcast skies. Yes. <laughs> Glenn's newest book is Island of Thieves, which was named one of USA Today's five books not to miss. So isn't that a fantastic group? I'm I'm just thrilled to be your host tonight. So what we like to do just to help the audience get a little acquainted with our, our speakers is we play a game of 20 questions. 
it's not really 20 questions because, you know, that would take like an hour and we wouldn't have anything left of the program. But we do have these official backroom cards with, you know, questions on the back. So um, we're just going to run through a few to give you a chance to get to know the authors. I like to ask the questions in the order that I see people on the screen. And uh, guess what, Valerie, you're up first. <laughs> so, um, Valerie, I'm going to ask you, when do you feel the most creative? Um, 10 to 2. 10 to uh, 2. How interesting that you can narrow uh, it down that specifically. Yeah, so, that's not when I write, but that's when I feel most oh. creative. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks for answering the question accurately. <laughs> when do you write? Um, after the day job. So um, usually starting at six to probably nine or so. Ah, uh, that's really Sorry about the puppy too. Yeah, yeah. So, so for any aspiring writers in the audience, you know, that's, that's the glamorous life of a writer, right? F fitting it in, in between the day jobs and other things too. Thanks. So Simon, you're up next. Where do you write? I write pretty much everywhere, but I'd say my favorite place is our, our ski cottage in uh, Mont Tremblant, just because it's right next to the ski slope and it gives me a beautiful view of the mountain. Like it's very inspiring, especially in the winter when there's lots of snow and I can start up the fireplace. I think this is my favorite place and where I feel the most, uh, you know, uh, productive. That's so interesting. And do you know, are you like unplugged from the internet when you're writing? No, never. Uh, I do like research on the go and I have so many things going on, even though I'm writing full time. I'm also into investments. So uh, I always have to check my stuff, emails, uh, social media or just regular emails. So uh, no, I don't think I could be unplugged from the internet for more than 24 to 48 hours, I'd say. All right. That that also is encouraging, I think, for any aspiring writers, because, you know, not many of us have a life where we can just disappear for a long period of stretch and write. Yeah. Thanks. Reese, is your desk messy or tidy? Oh, um, well, it's tidy three times a year um, <laughs> because I write three books a year, which I know is crazy. But um, so at the end of each book, I've got all of my research materials and everything piled around me. So then I clean it all off and it looks absolutely beautiful for about three days. And then I start on the next project. And then it, you know, I like to have like a little bastion around me of any research materials I might need. You know, if I'm doing a New York book, I've got the Encyclopedia of the City of New York. I've got photo books and, and I can just swivel around and grab things. So it's very, very rarely tidy. Um, I'm, not a, I'm not a hugely tidy person. I love to see it, but I'm not very good at it. <laughs> That's a great answer. I can just visualize it. Thank you. Glenn, are you a plotter or a pantser? Oh, that's the classic question, isn't it? Um, I, I, I started out a plotter. I tried a couple of book pantsing. I'm now circling the pendulum swinging back again. I'm, I think I'm just comfortable understanding where the story's going and then allowing myself to take detours in between big plot points that I've figured out. Because sometimes, occasionally, you take a little side trip, look at a roadside attraction. <laughs> I like hearing it that way. I, I do the same thing. I, I need the roadmap to know my destination. But yeah, side trips. That, that's, mm -hmm. yeah, I like yeah. that, too. Yeah. And um, Valerie, I see in the chat someone posted about your, your uh, puppy barking. And you mm -hmm. wrote, my puppy barks when I get online to get treats. I've told that story so many times, but I couldn't remember which author it was. <laughs> <laughs> You do know that it's the puppy that's trained you and not the other way around. Exactly. Right? It's, you know, she's put on some COVID pounds too. So I've been trying to wean her off, but she's got me trained. <laughs> that's funny. While we have you, Valerie, you get the next question. What was your favorite book as a child? Ooh, as a child. Um, I love Agatha Christie. So it was probably an Agatha Christie. I think my favorite is um, The Murder of Roger Ackroyd. Mm -hmm. as a child even how about that yeah <laughs> that's what well, got me hooked we all read above our grade level didn't we when we were children you know so yeah that's nice Simon this question believe it or not is random but in contrast to what sounds like you had a very glamorous career what was your first job First job was as an infantry officer in the Canadian forces I joined the army when I was 17 years old so compared to 
many of my uh, colleagues uh, writing careers, I don't have a bachelor, I don't have much education. I learn what I write doing the actual job. So I joined the army in 1997. I was 18 years old at the time. And um, yeah, that's uh, wow. that was my first job. And I never looked back. I enjoyed every moment of it. I think that's so cool because, you know, a lot of people work up, they start as a dishwasher and, you know, do these menial jobs. You just jumped right into what you ended up doing your entire life. That's awesome. Actually, I left the army in 2001, just before September 11 to join the DRCMP. I didn't know, of course, that 9-11 was about to happen. Uh, and I left the army to do something else. But I had only three careers in my, uh, in my life. I, the military, the RCMP, and then writing fiction. Writing. Yeah. Nice. Fascinating. <laughs> so um, that hopefully gives everybody a little taste of what is waiting for you in the breakout rooms of how you can chat with these authors and get to know them. And of course, find out about their books. But the authors tonight have also brought a book recommendation for us. And we're going to start with you, Valerie. What book are you recommending that, you know, you read that you think everybody should read? Um, her name is Night by Yasmin Ango. And uh it is not a cozy, so anybody who knows me and knows that I write cozies might expect this to be a cozy, but it's not. It's a thriller, and um, there were parts that were a little dark for me, but um, by the end, I was fist pumping and cheering the um, heroin on, so I really enjoyed it. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And what about you, Simon? What are you recommending tonight? Before I talk about my recommended book, I just want to say that Yasmin Engo is a friend of mine where she's a published at Thomas and Mercer as well. And her book is fantastic. And so was her uh, sequel. She's a fantastic author. And she, I, I personally believe she has a great future in front of her as a novelist. As for the book that I recommend is from Mas my friend David McCloskey, Damascus Station. I'm sure if you're into spy thriller, you've heard about that. David is a former CIA officer. And I didn't expect, I didn't know him at the time when I downloaded his book. I listened on the audio and it was fantastic. As a former RCMP officer that worked intelligence and counterterrorism, David nailed it in, authentici in authenticity. Uh, it really shows that he used to be a case officer and I, it, it blew me up. It, it was fantastic. And I cannot recommend it enough. Damascus Station from David McCloskey. Thank you. It sounds wonderful. And people are saying in the comment, CIA, CIA I'm sold. <laughs> so nice. Uh, Reese, what are you recommending people read? I'm reading, I'm recommending The Keeper of Lost Things by Ruth Hogan. Um, and it's mm -hmm. a very strangely different book. And it's one that just stays with you. It's um. Uh, it's not a thriller. It's not a mystery, or there is mystery in it. It's just one of those sweet, charming books that you can read when you're stressed. It's about someone who loses a, a special keepsake from his fiance right before she's killed. And so for the rest of his life, he picks up small things that obviously meant something to somebody, but they're just trivial, like someone's hair barrette or something. And he writes down meticulously where he found them and when. And when he dies, he leaves his house to his assistant with the instructions that she tries to get them back to the people they belong to. And so you've got all these different stories, some of them really poignant that touch your heart and, and good little tiny good things that happen. So it's a sort mm -hmm. of book, the world is a really shitty place. You read this, I really recommend it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It sounds amazing. How about you, Glenn? Uh, my recommendation is one I was reading when you guys asked me the question, and, and that is the book Tatiana by Martin Cruz Smith, the Edgar Grandmaster. Um, Tatiana is, uh, is a, a book in the series of the Arkady Renko novels, which kicked off in 1981, I believe it was, with Gorky Park, the acclaimed novel. And if you want an example of series fiction that keeps it fresh as the world of changes around the lead character, the Renko novels are absolutely amazing. Tatiana is also, by the way, the, is also a bit of a nod to another classic mystery also named after the first name of a lady along the way. So there's a, there's a bit of a nod to classic history there too. Nice, thank you, thank you all. Wasn't that fun? We hope that you enjoyed this taste of what a backroom event is like. The best part comes immediately after when the audience is divided into breakout rooms and the authors visit each room in turn.
We'd love to show you what a breakout session is like because these relaxed face-to-face -face conversations are the hallmark of our backroom events. But breakout sessions are never recorded. What's said in the backroom stays in the backroom. Thank you.